I'm Bruce Fumey. Now, berwick upon tweed must be the most hotly contested town on the Scottish-English border. Even today, it's technically in England, but that makes no geographical sense. I've already made a video about the massacre when Edward Longshanks captured it in 1296. So how did Robert the Bruce take Berwick back from the English? If you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then click the subscribe button at the bottom right. In the meantime, let me tell you the story. Now, first of all, I know this isn't berwick upon tweed but whenever I head down to Berwick, I like to stop off here and walk the cliffs at St Abbs. And let's be honest, it's a nice spot to give you the background, isn't it? Now, if you're watching this, then you probably know that the Scots won the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314, in June. But that didn't end English claims over Scotland. The English certainly weren't about to give up a walled town on this side of the Tweed that Scots would use for profitable trade to the continent if the English didn't use it as a launch pad for further invasions. So, how to take it back? In January 1316, Robert the Bruce and his right-hand man James Douglas launched a surprise attack under the protective cloak of a winter's night. But as they crept up towards an unrepaired section of the wall by the harbour, the moon came out and they were spotted and driven back. Now this was a disappointment. But things were worse for the inhabitants of Berwick. The occupiers were English, but the inhabitants... Yeah, it was even messier than it is today. But both citizens and garrison were cut off behind their walls by a Scottish fleet blockade and supplies. For months, they'd been sending letters to Edward II of England complaining that men were dying of starvation. The garrison were eating their horses. Worse still, the peasantry were reduced to eating those Marmite sandwiches at the back of the fridge. <laughs> Edward had no response. He'd been bested by Robert the Bruce in battle, and occasionally Bruce, but constantly good Sir James Douglas, were raiding deep into English territory. Edward decided that his only hope was God. Now for those of you that have watched my video on the Declaration of Our Broth, think back to these events a few years earlier. Have you logged that for later? In August 1316, John, Pope John the 22nd had been appointed as the new Pope in Avignon. And seeing as the Scots couldn't speak to him, having been excommunicated for following Robert the Bruce, the English got in there first, saying, oh, you're poping us. We'd love to go on crusade to Jerusalem, but we're so busy trying to defend Berwick and dealing with the Scots that we just couldn't fit it into our schedule. What say you release a papal bull to demand that the Scots accept a truce? Just for a year or two. Then we can get back to the fighting. And that is exactly what the Pope did. He sent ambassadors to deliver the bull, although I would have thought cowboys would have been a more sensible option. <laughs> what do I know? I'm not even religious. They delivered the sealed letter from the Pope to Edward in London, and then they headed north. And when they got here, the Bishop of Kerbet and the Archdeacon of Perpignan were cordially welcomed by King Robert, and they handed them the Pope's letters. King Robert took the letters and said, Hold on. These letters from the Pope are addressed to our dearest son in Christ, Edward II, illustrious King of England, and to our dear son, the noble Robert the Bruce. Well, there's a tizzy and no mistake. You see, said King Robert, there are several gentlemen in Scotland who have the name Robert the Bruce. It would be a bit embarrassing if I opened a letter that was meant for one of them. Now, if they'd been addressed to the King of Scots, then I would have known that they were for me. Oh, no, 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 I couldn't possibly open them. The envoy said, oh, but the Holy Father couldn't possibly employ denominations that committed him to one side or another in a temporal dispute. Robert pointed out that in depriving him of the title of King, that's exactly what they had done. Everyone here knows that I'm the King of Scots. You should be grateful I'm a nice bloke. If you'd made that same mistake with some monarchs not a million miles south of here, 
you would have got a much more savage reply. So, sod off. And with that, off they sodded. They then got the unfortunate Adam Newton, superior of the Franciscan monks at Berwick, and they said, I tell you what, you go and give them the letters. Now this is the parish of Old Cambus. It's 12 miles north of Berwick, and this is where Adam Newton found the King of Scots preparing siege engines to take the town. Robert the Bruce refused to meet him, but when his letters were delivered, Bruce noticed that they still weren't addressed to the King of Scots, and he sent them back, adding that so long as his royal titles were withheld, there would be no truce, and he would make himself master of Berwick. Now Berwick is still a walled town in the River Tweed, although nowadays the walls are more commonly used for a nice walk rather than defending anything. But Edward had to defend it somehow, and so he ordered a force to be mobilised. Now, here's a map of the town of Berwick as it was. I'm standing here. Now, this isn't an oldie worldie map. It was sketched and given to me by Dr Fiona Watson, no less. If you're interested in Scottish history, then you've almost certainly heard Fiona Watson on the radio or seen her on the telly. She's a proper expert professor, and I'll be honest, a bit of a hero of mine. She's written loads of history books, and she's a particular expert on the wars of independence. But she's just written her first historical novel called Dark Hunter, set in Berwick at exactly the time that we are talking about. She drew the map for that book. It'll be in all good bookshops in April 2022. That is proper exciting. What's even more exciting is that I'm meeting up with her on the 25th of October as my guest for my monthly conversations with experts that are available to my Patreon members. So, if you are a Patreon member, then send in your questions on the Wars of Independence and I'll put them to Fiona on the 25th. If you're not already a Patreon member, then why not join up by clicking the white tab up there. So, Edward's trying to get together a force, but inside the town here, there had been a bit of bad blood between the good folk of Berwick and their occupying garrison. The commander's defrauding the treasury, the troops aren't being properly paid, Edward's given control to the mayor, the troops aren't happy, and the military have been insulting a guy called Peter Spaulding for being married to a Scotswoman. He is so offended that he sends word to Sir Robert Keith, Marshal of Scotland, who happens to be related to the very Scotswoman who's been disrespected. Spaulding gives the date of the next time that he's on guard at a particular section of the wall here. If the Scots come then, then he'll let them pass. So Robert Keith gives this message to Robert the Bruce. Yeah. Was it a trap? Was it genuine? Let's take the risk, but keep the details to ourselves. Sir Keith was told to take his men to Duns, which is about 15 miles to the west. On April the 1st, 1318, Sir James Douglas and Thomas Randolph arrived to make fools of the English. Only then was the task revealed to the men. They were to go over the wall unnoticed at the appointed place and hold that section of the wall until Bruce arrived with reinforcements the next morning. Now, it seemed the prospect of plunder was just too much of a temptation and instead of waiting, some of the infiltrators ran amok. This nearly blew the whole game because some folk, having been alerted, grabbed weapons and fell back to gather in the castle. Seeing that the Scots holding the wall were reduced to a handful, the governor of the castle sallied out with a much larger force. But almost single-handedly, Sir Thomas Randolph and good Sir James Douglas, the finest knight in Christendom, between them, with the aid of William Keith of Golson, drove the much larger force back to the castle, holding the day just long enough for King Robert and his army to arrive and secure the town. It's like a movie! Before long, the castle garrison gave in to hunger and Berwick was Scottish once more. Now, normally, 
Robert Bruce destroyed the walls and the castles and towns that he took, but this was Scotland's most important trading port. So the walls were maintained and left under the charge of Sir Walter Stewart, who had recently sired Robert the Bruce's grandchild, who would go on to be the first Stuart King of Scots. And King Robert headed south to take the fight deep into England, leaving many an Englishman to wish that the Pope had addressed his letter properly. A couple of years later, the community of Scotland wrote their own letter to that same Pope demanding that he recognise Robert the Bruce as king. It was called the Declaration of our Broth and eventually the Pope recognised Scotland and its king. There's another video about Robert the Bruce coming up on screen now. In the meantime, Hamian Dock is going to be Lama alive. Cheerio and Drastic.